All praises to the Most High and to His only begotten Son, Yahushua Hamashiach, to His Ruach HaKodesh, the Spirit of Truth, and of course to the Ox and the Cody's. Still hanging in there. Still hanging in there. We're close. We're close, brothers and sisters. Don't give up yet. Right? So, listen, <laughs> y'all, let me tell y'all something. My channel is grounded on and began or rooted in the Most High. That's my platform, right? And wisdom, which comes from the Ruach HaKadosh, when joined with the Holy Scriptures and applied to certain things in our life right now, is essential. When I see or you speak on certain topics that is so touchy that, you know, all of a sudden people just feel triggered or the beast feels triggered by it, ooh wee, that is a strong man amongst us. So I talked about biracials and uh, how very submissive and docile our people are to you know, you got some of y'all out there by you pro black and I'm black love and I'm fighting for, I'm fighting white supremacy and blah, 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 and selective outrage. But then when it comes to the beast got you like by his little finger, he's like, sit down. I tell you who you are and who your people are. Their strength is in exclusivity. If y'all really, 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 really want to see why they have the power that they have, Really look at them instead of just getting selective outrage over things that you clearly don't want to understand. It's just, it's crazy. The Most High knew why he said what he said, right? That's the premise from which I take my information. It's no use you trying to fight Something that is um, constantly kept you in, in bondage by accepting it. Like, what kind of a submissive mess is that? But anyway, only you at the end of the day can truly determine your self-worth. And uh, ain't no white man died for our people, right? Okay, it was a black man. So if those are the ones who you let direct your narrative, then this is why I side-eye some of y'all like. Okay, because a lot of these other pro-black channels, take note. My The foundation of my channel is the most high. Their foundation is their Patreon or their uh, Monet, their Dinero, the heathens money they already gone the way of the heathen so a sellout will do what a sellout needs to do this is why i talk about the judas as much as i do because the spirit is strong amongst our people the spirit of betrayal okay all they you see when all the beast gotta do is just pull one of his celebrities or his little coon dogs and say come on I need you to post this and contradict or come against what this is. I mean, it could be a small a little channel with five views and not a lot. <laughs> but it could be powerful enough for them to feel offended. You, you're not worshiping us. Okay, this, this is just it. Okay. We force inclusivity on you and you're going to stay docile and weak. Because <laughs> inclusivity was never to make you strong. It's like everything else, as we talk about the time of the Gentiles, to snuff you out, to destroy you. That's what it is. So it's not surprising when you see them send out those that look like you to reiterate or regurgitate their racist talking points. Both Becky and Brad. They... Okay, come on. Let, we we got to do some some damage control. We need some disclaimers because as soon as I I posted that vid, video, because this is how you notice know, the beast system. 
And all of a sudden, they post this little black baby hugging up this little white baby. If we could all think like this, y'all don't know what's going on in spiritual wickedness in high places is at work every day. Some of y'all don't want us to talk about the two-thirds, but I don't think you understand. It is not to, you know, put anyone on a pedestal, okay? It is to put before you a very real consequence. Why we were put into this situation and eventually those of you who easily sell out your people That's what you get. You don't have no worth. You're not getting any better. You hit a plateau. It's that for you. Listen, you think you're going to buy yourself into the new kingdom or you're just going to sit happy and, you know, buy yourself a comfortable spot in hell. For lack of knowledge, the most high people are destroyed. You think people are hitting against or out against a particular people because they're jealous. No. Gosh, dang it. No. It, this is why the Most High says the wisdom of this world is foolishness to him. And the wisdom of the Most High is foolishness to the world, basically. Because you think that this is a war because you can be bought. You can. It's a war against your massa. Because you can be bought. But you don't have any idea what is coming. For especially the sellouts. Because nobody respects a trader. Nobody loves a trader. Even the ones that are giving you them silver coins to throw your people under the bus. They don't respect you either. They don't. Nobody hates a traitor more than the Most High. You think Esau just got what he got just because? No. Let's go to the book of Obadiah. Let's 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 go to the book of Obadiah. Let's see what the Most High was really trying to tell Esau again. Because I don't think y'all understand how the worst thing you can do is betray your people. It's bad enough we betrayed the Messiah when he came and did all that he did to try to free the people by and died and gave him salvation and they still turned on him and that's why he says he basically said listen don't be don't be shocked they hated him they gonna hate you too it was our own people that shunned him as well okay he all he he came as that example when he said he didn't come to destroy the law, he came to fulfill the law. Meaning he came to live as an example to the people. Because even though I know some of y'all want to talk about the, the law, or not all things are lawful but not profitable and all that. The thing is this, the people didn't know what it was to keep the law. So he came as that example. That's what fulfilling it meant. Because Israel needed the example. And they still didn't learn. And they're still not learning today. The most I put a dream in me recently that nearly, like, I turned pale. Oh, can I even turn pale? <laughs> but it was creep. It was to, as to things to come, especially for the shepherds. Now, you might not think that you are connected to scriptures or you're not religious or you're not, we're not religious or biblical, but some of y'all like to say that. It doesn't matter. Okay, if you are the leader of the people, the shepherd, and we're going to talk about that in a few, you have a duty to the sheep. Now, depending on which direction you lead, if you're going to lead us in a ditch and continue to keep us there, or you're going to lead us to salvation. You know, it's two choices. And the ditch is every time you sell out, and the heathens just be like, look, look, this is easy. Look at how easy they turn on each other. Like, defeated. That's the, that's the worst thing ever. And Esau got that burnt too. 
I mean, I, he's the only nation that the Most High says he hates. So I think we should use them as the example. Because, you know, and it's not just the male, male, female, all of that. My pages just be sticking together. Oh, here we go. Let's just remember this and then I'll close this and then I'll go into the next topic. Uh, let's see. So, uh, Obadiah, he gave it, what, one, one page. Because, you know, Esau has a short attention span and easily offended. And those who like to follow him. So, uh, here it is. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. In the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast as one of them, but thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction on, uh, in the day of their calam calamity, nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the causeway to cut off those of his that did escape, Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall return upon thine head. For as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the heathen drink continually. Yea, they shall drink. And they shall swallow down, and they shall be as though they had not been. They're going to go into non-existence. You can choose which you want. Okay. So the Most High is here. He's basically issued a decree for backstabbing. Let's go to Zechariah, Zechariah 13, verse 7. Now, I talked about Obama. And what he presented on his um, birth certificate, he could have just been Israel. That, that thought actually passed my mind. But because he was working with the heathens and, you know, money talk. Think about Judas. What the Most High said, it is better the son of perdition had never been born. Y'all don't know what y'all playing with. Y'all don't know what y'all playing with. Stick with your pro black and leave the biblical things alone. Okay. I'm coming from a biblical standpoint and the world will not understand these things because the world love it themselves. Right? They don't know. And that's why he says there's going to have to be this cutoff because if you can for the least little bit sell out your people, it's like you the worst of the worst, man. Let's go to the uh, the foolish shepherd. And oh, actually, this is eleven verse fifteen. And the Lord said unto me, Take unto thee yet the instruments of a foolish shepherd. For lo, I will raise up a shepherd in the land which shall not visit those that be cut off. Neither shall seek the young one, nor heal that that is broken, nor feed that that standeth still, but he shall eat the flesh of the fat and tear their claws in pieces. Woe to the idle shepherd that leaveth the flock. The sword shall be upon his arm and upon his right eye. His arm shall be clean, dried up, and his right eye shall be utterly darkened. I don't think y'all understand what that is really saying. Make the connection with the son of perdition. Our leaders are our men. I'll say it again. 
our leaders are the males, the men. All right. Shepherd, king of the earth, which let's go to Revelation 1. All right. And the, anytime Revelation goes out, y'all fast and pray. Because I trust your little heathen friends are out there spinning out their unclean spirits from the Caucasus Mountain or wherever it is that they came out from. We done told you hell came on earth to come get you. And they're not getting you like dragging you to hell all willy-nilly picking you off. No, they come like they always do. They come and they get you to give up your right, your righteousness, give up your place. Some of y'all make it so easy. So easy. But it will always be the worst thing you ever do is while you're doing that to throw your own people under the bus. Man. Because some of y'all, like, you, you don't get it. You don't get it at all. Mm -mm -mm. That's the worst thing when the most I said, it's better you had never been born. Wow. I don't know which is worse. Telling Esau he hates him because Esau is a traitor. And those who love following Esau and say, okay, Esau, what you got? What you going to give me to throw my people under the bus again and again and again and again? And they're like, hey, what you want? <laughs> you want fame? You want fortune? And then later on, all hell break loose in your life and you wonder, wait, 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 but... But what, but what, 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 I, I, I thought Satan don't have no loyalty, neither those of his children to you. Y'all, the most I already said, they have a perpetual hatred for you. Y'all just don't like to listen. Scripture says here. Okay, hold on one second. Okay, we're going to read from verse 1 and on. The revelation of Yahushua Hamashiach, which Elohim gave unto him to shew unto his servants, things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of Elohim and of the testimony of Hamashiach, and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth, and they that hear the words of this prophecy. And keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you, and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Now take note of this, where he says which is and which was and which is to come. And then go look what the beast is called, the imposter. Anyway, we'll go there in another time. And from Yeshua Hamashiach, who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead. And the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and had made us kings and priests unto Elohim and Abba. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. So he shows you. That he is the prince of the kings of the earth. If you go back into scripture, he shows you who he, who he is the prince and the king of. Judah, Israel, that's you. Now go into the scripture real quick and see. We talking about some backstabbers here, y'all. I ain't going to get too deep. All right? Because most of I showed me this four months ago. Because y'all 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 think everybody just going. Right? The first bout and this, maybe in the second bout. When the great tribulation, the greatest temptation, and the worst of it hits you. Probably. But let's go to when they attack the Messiah. Let's see who's attacking the Messiah. Oh, um, let's read from verse 18 to 19. Uh, you know, actually, let's read from 16. 
And he had on his vesture and on his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun and he cried with a loud voice saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great Elohim that ye may eat the flesh of the kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men and the flesh of horses and of men and of them that sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies. You got some people over here fighting with the beast and they're dedicated to the beast. I think they talk about y'all got some of these people up in some boules and some some masonry and some other stuff. Like, you got people straight up sold out. I got people who say, how do you get back your soul? Honey, you have to fight for that. Like, your life. To... Right now, through the grace period that we're at, it's not concrete. You have to fight for that. Okay? That's why we try to tell our people, stay out of some stuff. You know, leave the witchcraft alone. Right? Stop selling out your people. Some of y'all over here, oh, well, why are people calling me black Nazis? And, oh, oh I don't know what, what they, and who cares? Golly. You can tell a sellout just by some of the stuff they start saying. Gosh, dang it. This work is rough. I don't know how some of y'all do it at all, man. Whew. The kings of the earth fighting right next to the beast. But then if you if that don't convince you anymore, let's see. Who's fornicating with the whore? Let's see. Uh, <clears throat> we'll get into it deeper if YouTube don't shut off. Because, of course, I do know that they do come on here. Most of them come. And they copy because, as the Most High said, the heathens don't know him. Scripture says the heathens do not know the God of the Bible. So I'm trying to figure out what they teaching you, who they teaching you about, and why y'all still listening. Hmm. They don't know him. He been trying to tell y'all this, but it, I guess the purge has to happen. Because not everybody who says they're for you are really for you. Judas claimed he was for the Messiah. What'd he do? He didn't realize how valuable he or how good he had it. He told him that, listen, you have power to tread on serpents and scorpions, which remember, go to Revelation 9. He power over all these things to defeat them. But no. The jingles and the coins and coveting things that the other nations have has taken precedence in a lot of our people. Easily offended, as they've always been, because, as we said, prophets had it hard. Messengers had it hard. Our people would stretch them. Go to war against them. But let's go back. Who, who Who's fornicating with the whore? Let's see. Uh... So Revelation 17, let's go. Ah, here we go. Mm -mm -mm, one second. Uh, verse 17, chapter 17. And there came one of the seven angels, which had the seven vows, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither, I will shew unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth have been drunk with the wine of her fornication. Who you think they over here running to committing fornication, bringing their bastard seeds up in here, and then all of a sudden, because they hear a strong, powerful message out there, they counteracted with their Jewish media. Man, I'm telling you, whoo, we in trouble. We are in trouble. Gosh, dang it. Side eye and some of them that just came up on, on on the scene and then all of a sudden they're quick to just grab certain things and run with it. Okay, uh one second. 
So yeah, the same thing with the foolish shepherds. Like some of y'all overlook the mark of the beast, all right? There are those who will easily take that mark. Oh, not to mention the scripture also talks about, listen, that's why I'm sending this warning out. If you know who you are, kings of the earth, right? Our leaders, our leaders, be careful how you lead the sheep. The Most High is watching you. And the sword, as Zechariah said, is upon your arm. Because when you take that mark, because y'all just can't seem to get over Becky or can't get seem to get over um, this kingdom or the money bags, he's coming for you. I said this in my last video. He's coming for you. You keep leading his sheep astray. Every single time and then changing up his words. He's coming for you. So all you need to do is what? Repent. Or, because you feel easily offended, as it says it's already written here, some of y'all going to join the army of the beast. Or already is. Not just the ones in the army, but ones who are working with them in whatever private organizations they have set up. Already done, gave their devotion. Ready to counteract whatever it is that comes up against the beast kingdom. Do you need warnings like this? Because scripture says that Satan, the beast, and the false prophet got unclean spirits that go out, right? Let's see. Uh, let's go to uh, Revelation 16. Verse 13 to 14. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. So he's telling you here, what's up? Three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of these things. And let's see who they go after. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle of that great day of Yahuwah Almighty. So they're coming after the men. I'm not surprised when I'm talking about biracials and y'all be the first ones to post up some stuff and it's just like you sold out if you were even of us. Sickening. Not all of y'all. This is why I say some. I don't want to generalize. I did see that brother that did that thing with some of our sleeping sisters in that Chinese salon for those people who don't love us but you still patronizing their work or giving them their money to continue to mistreat you yeah i see that that was awesome that was amazing All right but y'all gonna have to get that warrior spirit in and that's one of the reasons i posted that video that i did excuse the music and the expletives okay that's but there was something in that message that i wanted to get together with to understand what i was trying to say Right? Only one thing can truly activate you. If you say you're a warrior for the most high, is the what is he what did he say is the two greatest commandments? Love for your neighbor, yourself, and the most high. This ain't no traitor spirit. This ain't no I'ma betray you, stab you in the back, and I'm gonna all of a sudden start working for the most high's kingdom and get it. No. I know some of y'all don't like this calling out, but the 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 messengers in here, they gave the good, bad, and the ugly. Zechariah is an end time prophet. He's the one who talked about certain things that y'all don't want to discuss. Or y'all think, oh, that's not what he meant. He's the one that talked about the, the anointing that fell upon the Most High's men and women and people in a time when great, 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 great tribulation comes upon them. You got to figure this out. The Most High don't do compromises. And that's exactly what betrayals or traitors are. That's what it comes down to. And the reason why it's son of perdition is because it is, it, it is dependent on our leaders. This is why they will go to men. This is why when Becky go out crying, 
you know, the beast done send his women out to do the dirty work or not even just do the, they just go on their own because they know what they're working on. As we said, Becky is the most protected woman on the planet. She is the most accepted woman on the planet. Make no mistakes. So I know she over there working overtime, especially disarming some of y'all who, yeah, I'm going to leave it alone. Shalom, y'all.